It always seemed to me that the trial of George Pell was never so much about George Pell as it was about the Catholic Church and, and that they had basically picked him as the most senior Catholic in Australia as the man that had to take the fall for the sins of the Church. And then when that all ultimately fell apart in the High Court, it, it felt like a terrible moment for the entire cause of, of trying to repair what was done within the Catholic Church because they had pinned their hopes on one man who was ultimately found not to have committed the crime that he was accused of. It just felt like he had to take, had to take the fall for so much that, that was not of his doing. And no, he was the whipping boy, basically. Well, you must also acknowledge that uh, for a couple of decades before then, he was already on the media hate list. I'm talking particularly the ABC, which unanimously was against Pell for, for decades because he was conservative because he tried to chain, uh, make priests follow the teaching of the church rather than a left-wing gospel, uh, because he did things like question global warm, the global warming religion, which he correctly saw as a rival faith to uh, the Christian one. Uh, he did all that. The, in the end, it, it was only in the last few years that it was, you know, oh, and he's a pedophile as well, and that's when, of course, it all hit it. But you, you still, still see what you describe to this very day. Mm. It is impossible to believe, when you look at the evidence, that this man raped two boys at once, two teenagers, he didn't know them at all, in an, uh, an open-door room over five minutes when there was no possibility that uh, they wouldn't have been interrupted in those five minutes. I mean, the whole thing was just absurd. He is innocent. Yet right now you've got people like the Prime Minister, like Darren Hinch, Say, so, oh, look, you know, it's a difficult day for Catholics. You've got uh, Louise Milligan, the ABC journalist, who made a mozza writing books, uh, falsely spearing him as a pedophile. Oh, this is a triggering day uh, for victims. Look, it's an insult to victims of, of Catholic priests, pedophile priests, and they did exist, and may they rot in hell, some of them. Indeed. It's an, it, it is an insult to them to think that they would or should feel better for ja by jailing an innocent man for crimes he could not possibly have committed. How on earth is that justice? And why do politicians and even some priests, uh, some bishops to this day, why do they tiptoe around and say, oh, we're really sorry for the victims, oh, you know, uh, we've got to remember the victims of this day that uh, George Pell is dead. No, he's an innocent man, an innocent man. And he was the victim of one of the most grotesques miscarriages of justice in Australian legal history. Well, following uh, my show this evening, we'll be playing your interview with Pell back in 2020 when he came out of prison. Let's just take a quick listen to some of what he said at the time. The moment in court when you heard the word guilty, yeah. what went through your mind? I don't know whether much did. I was uh, uh, too busy keeping control of myself. It was a blow and uh, uh, I just had to put up with it. You obviously saw him after what would have been one of the darkest times in his life. What stood out to you about him then? He had a sense of injustice. He felt that there was something going on with the Victoria Police, and I believe is absolutely correct. But he showed an amazing forgiveness for the man who'd falsely accused him. I find that, uh, look, I say to, the, to his last days, he was a true Christian trying to live up to the faith of Jesus Christ. I'm not a Christian, but I greatly admire that. And I think a lot of people today should remember him as having followed Christ in one thing. He was unfairly accused, he was crucified, and he died for the sins of others. Andrew Bolt, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you.